people need something that they can do for themselves, that communities can do for themselves, that lets people feel strong and not completely fall apart if they don't make money for a week. Crickets represent a kind of human cultural practice that predates all of the intensive farming, agriculture, economic development, like all of the things that don't necessarily give us wealth and stability. They are a source of food, entertainment, culture, and it doesn't have a big impact. There's something really simple about them. It's interesting, it just sort of organically became crickets. I had worked on a ranch in my early 20s in Montana. It was a wheat and cattle operation, and it was not an organic farm. The steer calves, they would be, it was just treated so horribly. They would have dehorning paste put on their horns. They would be just injected with all these antibiotics. Then they would be sold to feedlots, to factory farms. And so I thought, well, there has to be something else, you know, this just doesn't feel like the right way to do it. I had sort of a similar experience to Jude's where I worked on a couple of farms in Norway and they were raising really ethical, organic meat, but those experiences led me to feel like those industries weren't necessarily scalable or they'd become so rarefied. Farms outside of New York City that raise ethical lamb can only exist because of the fine dining market in New York City. And these farmers are like eking out a very fragile existence. I thought back to when I was a kid and visited an insect museum and ate mealworms. And, I, and like then I sort of started thinking about farming crickets, how I could do that in my apartment. And I talked to Jude about it. And Jude said, look at yourself in the mirror and say like, do I want to be a cricket farmer? So I like did that in the mirror a couple of times. And then I was like, yeah, I mean, first of all, it, it's like a $60 investment. So I ordered 2000 crickets and built a small cricket farm and you know, and then thought I would give it a shot. <laughs> So right now, we probably have somewhere around 5,000 crickets. They are the domestic cricket, so they're much more comfortable with being in densely populated areas. Like that's how they've evolved to live, as opposed to other kinds of crickets that have their own little burrow and like don't want another cricket near. The male cricket stands in front of his burrow and sings. This cricket, by farming it in this way, we're not forcing it to do something that it wouldn't do in nature. Even before COVID, we've talked a lot about crickets being a disaster-proof kind of food. Food tech events across the city are looking at the future of how and what we eat. And it's really about making sure that we have the right people at the table to discuss where the future of food is heading. How are we going to feed 9 billion people by 2050? That's where insects come in. They grow fast and cause less damage to the environment than meat production. Insects have moved their way in and out of human culinary culture forever, and that has endured and still endures in many parts of the world. But because of colonialism and global capitalism, wherein America and Europe kind of sets the standard of what is good and what isn't good, largely the fact that Europeans and Americans don't eat insects has kind of had a cascading effect. The first thing you do if you want to harvest them is you have to reach in and grab some crickets. And then usually it's in a plastic bag. And so you can put that either outside or you can put it in the refrigerator and they become just dormant. Their bodies don't move anymore. Yeah, these guys are six months old. I mean, they really had a long life. Then you can take them out and you can take off any debris that might be on them and then put them in the freezer for about a half an hour and so then they just die. They go from dormancy to freezing. 
we usually soak them, make yeah. sure that they're you know really clean, and then you could decide if you want to roast them whole, if you want to chop them. Crickets are really unique in that they're high protein and high fiber, which is pretty rare when you think of other animal proteins. And so there's this little nugget of protein and they're covered with the exoskeleton is made of chitin, which is really good for your gut bacteria. Hey Jude, can you tell me what you're doing right now? And stir frying some vegetables. We're going to add rice and then crickets. Lime. What are you making? Cricket fried rice. Crickets have two to three times more protein per pound than beef. I mean, that's one thing that leads to meat eaters having such high incidence of heart disease and other health problems that they're not getting enough fiber because they're eating so much meat. But crickets, you get your protein, you get your fiber. I think this, this pandemic makes you want to go out and model something that's different. Some people have sort of recoiled from our playing music with them and being like, wait, you play music with them and you eat them? As if that kind of adjacency is problematic, that you would like appreciate the thing that you're then going to eat, but why can't you? honor and appreciate and play a few concerts with them and then kill them and eat them. They've done everything a cricket can do and more.